So do you think it's hard for women in the car industry in general to get promoted? I do. The biggest reason, though, is I think as women, we are afraid to speak up. Mm-hmm. And I think as a as we we feel like our role is to work in the office, to work in the uh, to be a warranty clerk, mm-hmm. and and I think sometimes we accept that instead of really looking at what are the skills that that we could put in place to to be more successful. So how do you think you've built that confidence that's needed over the course of your career to be able to feel comfortable with the next step and pushing towards the next step? I think just pushing myself and having everything that I I see in front of me, and it's the next step. I've achieved it. I've achieved it, and I've never had fear. Um, I've always I've always thought, well, I'm going to be told no, mm-hmm. and when I was told no, I just felt that that was a that was you know I've got to figure out what the yes is, mm-hmm. and. And it, it made me realize that you you can do anything, but you, you have to stay focused on what your goals and what your dreams are. And my dream was to have my own dealership. I mean, that's what I kept on pushing, but I knew I had to be a sales manager. Mm-hmm. I, I knew I had to order cars. Uh, nobody nobody would show me how to do that. I mean, even at, at the, my first dealership, Frank, and it's funny that I'm remembering all these names mm-hmm. because I haven't remembered them in a while. And he was the new car manager, and I said, "Will you sh- will you show me how to order vehicles?" And this is when you had a pad, and you would write down the models like CC one hundred seven hundred three or CC one hundred nine hundred three. That was the model of the truck. Mm-hmm. And he would never do that, so I would have to do that on my own. I would have to learn that. So I finally did. I was promoted. He was fired. My next adventure or my next step was um, I was called by Peggy Keel, my lady that would come in and train me in finance Mm -hmm. because she was a a director for GMAC. She said, I have an opportunity for you if you want to become a general manager. I'm like, okay, well, why not? Absolutely. So (laughs) that was my first um, position as a general manager. I worked at L.C. Smith Chevrolet in L.A.J., Georgia, and I ran that created a a lot of really good relationships but again my passion was to develop my team is because I'm nothing without the team around me so I knew that with my you know road to success is my road to success for everyone else around me so then how important is it to have a mentor in order to be able to grow as a leader and get to where you want it's it's so important because I feel like that you have to have someone to look up to. You have to look. You have to have someone that you admire certain traits. I mean, mm-hmm. whether it's uh, the way that they speak, or whether it's the way that they close a deal, or maybe how they talk to you know your sales managers, your salespeople. Um, but you learn from each person that you are connected with in your life. And I feel like that through my journey, I have been. I have had people in front of me that I've taken advantage of and I have listened. You know, I was always told early on, if if someone is more successful than you, you need to listen. You need to watch what they're doing. How how do they do it? Um, I had a mentor tell me one time, you um, never want to be the smartest person in the room. No, you don't. You you know, and, and usually those people that think that they are the smartest, they're really not the smartest. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a very good listener. I, I'm, I'm, I observe. Um, at the dealership, when I when I took over as my first general manager, I work I worked myself to death. So at this point, I didn't have but one job. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was, I was working probably 70, 75 hours a week. And my goal was to have, I, I said to myself, I've got to figure out how to have people like myself that's going to surround me moving forward. Mm-hmm. Not, not that they, they, I don't want people to work as hard as I do because they will burn out. But I want people that have the desire to be successful, no matter, you know, in what position you want to be successful. But that's, that's what fuels me. That's what gave me my energy uh, to be successful. Um, One day I, I, I just, I said to myself, I want my own business. I said, I'm going to do this myself. I'm going to hire my own people because when you are a general manager, depending on the store and depending on the the way that that store is run, the owner uh, doesn't give you a lot 
of I don't I didn't feel like I could use all my skills that I felt like that I could use to make that a successful dealership. Right. So how do you balance career time, um, time with your wife and your mom and your passion of flowers and birdhouses? How do you manage all of that? Or, or is there such a thing as a balance, work-life balance? Maria, I did not figure that out until about six months ago. Wow, okay. Um, and if I could tell the women of Hudson one thing is that your family is where it's at. That's your support. And I think about all the things that I've been able to accomplish my biggest mentor has always been my mom because she has taught me no matter how many times you're on the bottom, you, got, you have to keep pushing and you have to keep going for the top. But not until six months ago did I realize that I missed funerals, I missed weddings, I missed birthday parties. I have a grandniece that's 16 years old. I'm like, oh my gosh, where is the time gone? So you have you have to figure it out. You have to understand that work will be here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you bring straight, I bring more on myself than people around that's required. Mm -hmm. It's because of the, the type of leader that I am. I want everyone to know in my dealership that I'm here for them no matter what but you have to figure that out. So you have to cut it off. You have to make a commitment, just like we make commitments on our debriefs. You know, I gotta sell X amount of cars a month or whatever. You have to make a commitment to yourself, your wife, your family, because they need you too. Mm -hmm. They they, they need do. you and you know, I need them. So uh, you have to do it. Um, you can do it and, and have that balance. So what advice would you give to the next generation of female and male leaders that are stepping up to a promotion that requires more time at work um, or maybe a promotion that requires them to travel while their family is at home? So again, it starts with yourself and realizing the environment. Um, when I came to this store seven years ago, uh, I came in as a GSM. It was during a buy sale. Um, and you know, I, I realized that we had to develop a new team. I mean, we had we had a great fixed ops department that had been here for a long time. But I also knew that I had to figure out a way to develop people around me really quickly to get to the place that I wanted to get to. Mm -hmm. I knew that I was going to come in. It was my store, so I finally had an uh, ability to do it the way that I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. And that was to make sure they got their time off to make sure that they had time with their family, to make to make sure that I gave them the training and the tools that they needed to be successful. And to also understand the strengths of each person. Um, I would say that you, you have to understand your role as a leader and understand the strengths of the people that are around you to help promote them to their next step. So was your motivation to become a leader in the car industry, you know, obviously you told us your family, um, but was it to help develop other people also? That's, that is the whole reason. I mean, that is, that's what makes me excited is when I see the, my, and now I see my team, uh, we're actually going through a renovation we started yesterday. And, but when I see my team come together and get the job done, no matter what, and see them go to the next level, uh, that is my motivation. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's my only motivation. I mean, I feel like that I could walk out of here and I could say, okay, guys, I'm done, but I have so much more to give. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I just, uh, I have the desire to win. And I've, I've always had the desire to win, but my passion is for my people to win with me.